Hello everyone. Welcome to our discussion of chapter 5. We're talking about itemized deductions in this chapter. Uh, this will be our first of two uh, podcasts about this. Uh, and so what we want to do, first of all, I want to emphasize the idea that the total itemized deductions only are deductible when they exceed the amount of your standard deduction. You always take the higher of the two, either the standard deduction with all the extra standard deduction um, things for being blind or um, how, because of age that we talked about in earlier chapters in chapter two, and you compare it to your total itemized deductions. And you look at that, and so, and you pick the higher of the two. So these itemized deductions will say are deductible, but they only have a tax benefit if they exceed the standard deduction. Okay, so we look, look at these, and each one of these that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna kind of roughly go in the order that they show up on the Schedule A. Each one of them has some limitations, okay? So it's not just a blanket, these, every, these deductible, add it all up. There are restrictions and limitations, um, phase outs, floors, all kinds of things that uh, have to be considered to get how much is deductible and then we add it all up for the different types of itemized deductions to see if we've gotten more than the standard, okay? So let's start with medical expenses, okay? Uh, and first thing we probably should realize is that medical expenses are only deductible if they're over 7.5% of AGI. So this is our first kind of floor, if you will, uh, of AGI, meaning if your, item, your, your medical expenses have to be substantial because 7.5% of your adjusted gross income is a, typically a pretty significant part of your income, right? So your medical expenses all added up have to be over that and only the amount by which it goes over the seven and a half. So you calculate your seven and a half percent of AGI, you subtract it from your total medical expenses and that's the amount that's deductible, okay? So who is, what, what do we constitute medical expense? First of all, who, who do you pay for, okay? And it can only be for, and this is one of the first restrictions, it can only be for medical expenses for yourself, spouse, and dependents, okay? So if you pay medical expenses of somebody who is not a dependent, a friend or something like that, that is not a deductible medical expense. I don't care how necessary it is, all right? It's not a medical expense. Uh, just an example, if you go, go on GoFundMe and you see a uh, a fundraiser for someone who's cancer, you say, oh, I'll put in $100. It's not a charitable contribution we'll talk, we'll talk about in the second podcast, and it's not medical expense because that's not somebody who's a dependent, okay? So it's not going to be a deductible, not going to be able to be used as part of your total itemized deductions, okay? They have to, that relation has to exist when the date we're paid, and, okay, it has to be not reimbursed by insurance, so any medical expense that ins health insurance or other types of insurance pay isn't going to be deductible, okay? Uh, and, and you have a little bit of a challenge if you pay for it in 2022 and they reimburse you in 2023, technically the same idea as a tax refund. If you got a benefit for it in 2022 and you get it, get it back in 2023, it's actually income. Uh, typically, the reimbursements in today's most situations happen soon enough that that's not an issue. But that is a, it's only the amount you end up paying out of pocket that is deductible. So what, what the, comes under that, that definition of medical expenses? First of all, the, the key thing is it has to be subscribed, prescribed, doctor prescribed, and we're fairly uh, broad on what we mean by doctors, meaning uh, it's not just medical me medical MDs, but sometimes things like uh, certainly chiropractors and other uh, doctors. Um, but it can't be about maintenance of general health. It has to be to treat a specific 
illness or condition or situation okay and so for instance um, you know vitamins aren't deductible medical expense but if the doctor gives you a prescription to go and get a particular type of supplement or things that may be at a prescription strength certain vitamins can be only taken at a certain strength if they're prescribed then that would be to treat a particular illness or condition that would be deductible okay um, and it can only be for the actually pay during the year regardless of when the care is so it's a matter of when you pay it so you go to the doctor uh, in, in December of 2022 but you don't pay for it in 2023 it's gonna be a 2023 deduction all right um, so that's the th thing and so it it's broad but, but narrow in the same way meaning uh, broad in that it's uh, anything like medical devices uh, wheelchairs or things like that uh, drugs that are prescribed uh, any type of doctor visits dentist visits eyeglass visit uh, any of those things would be uh, included in uh, medical expense what you have to be careful of if it's a big expense and especially if it's something that is a um, an adjustment to your home or some of that is it a capital expenditure it has it added for, so for instance let's say that your doctor tells you you have to get a filtration system for your house you've got such an allergy problem or something like that it's specifically to address a particular uh, medical need okay you do that the question then is did it make the value of your house go up because if you paid ten thousand dollars for this filtration system and it makes your value of your house go up the part that it makes your house go up is not deductible so if you say okay the value of your house went up four thousand you paid ten so the amount deductible is only six okay and there's a lot of uh, court cases and things like that that come up because of that uh, scenario especially because that that's obviously a big expense it has to be a big expense to be medical and deductible anyway because it's got to be over seven and a half percent for AGI okay transportation costs to go to and from the doctor hospital dentist all those kinds of things uh, could be uh, deductible if it's to and from all right going to the doctor if you drive your own vehicle you can keep track of your your gas and you know all that kind of stuff or you can just keep track of the miles and deduct it at 18 or 22 cents per mile the rate changed during 2022 so if it's the first half of 2022 it's 18 cents in the second half it's 20 22 cents per mile uh, so driving back and forth uh, there's also deduction a limited deduction for stay overnight if you have to go to the hospital um, and your for treatment but you don't actually stay in the hospital you have to be close because you have to come back the next day for treatment as well or something like that then that you there's a deduction you the cost of staying overnight and if for a child or somebody who needs help and somebody goes with them then that person's um, cost of the stay is also it's limited very fifty dollars a night which is very limited um, but there is some availability of that deduction so these are the things that qualify most health insurance qualifies if it's not you're going to be provided by your employer because if your employer paid for it out of your check or something it's already reflected in your w-2 uh, but if you pay for other types of health insurance outside of your employer outside of withholding on your thing it can be deductible uh, and long-term care insurance is deductible but it's limited based on your age to an amount because uh, it's very expensive and they didn't want you to buy a very high-end plans and get the deduction for it okay so that's what your medical expense so there's several things that go into that it needs to be prescribed needs to be uh, for the right people and, and and it needs to be over the seven and a half percent so as you evaluate that and things you look at the type of expense who it's for um, what it's for and whether it fits those criteria 
and then add it up to see if it, you know, is amongst your other itemized deductions, is your, if you're going to be able to use it. All right, moving to the next category, state and local taxes. First of all, federal taxes, uh, on it, uh, the, your FICA tax on your check that you get withheld from your uh, check is not deductible. No federal taxes are deductible for your federal taxes, okay? So that kind of makes sense, but that's that, we want to be very clear about that. The things that are deductible, okay, again, as part of all your other itemized deductions, is personal property taxes, local real estate taxes, state and local income taxes, okay, anything really that your state and local does, and foreign taxes, okay, that we probably will want to do that a little differently than deducting it here. But these go on this Schedule A, okay? Uh, the big ones typically are your state and local income taxes. In Pennsylvania, you have a uh, both a state income tax and a local income tax that's withheld. Those that withholding, the amount withheld or any other amounts you have to pay um, are deductible in the year that you pay it. I'm sure that you know because you sometimes will pay for 2022's taxes in 2023. That amount is deductible in 2023, even though it was for your 2022 taxes at the state or local level. Property tax is also the big one. You usually have a spring in Pennsylvania and a fall taxes, school taxes uh, on real estate. We don't have really a personal property tax in Pennsylvania, but other states do, okay? So that to be a property tax, it has to be based on value, okay? What's referred to in the tax law as ad valorem. It means it's based on the value of the property. We pay a license fee uh, to register our car. That's the same regardless whether I have an $80,000 vehicle, vehicle or an $800 vehicle. So it has no basis on the value. And so it is not a personal property tax and is not included in our deductible taxes. Now, there's a limit, and that this applies to all state and local taxes, including property taxes, income taxes, personal property tax, all of those, okay, uh, is $10,000, okay? Uh, for everybody except for married, filing jointly, it's just 5000 So single is 10000 okay? Married, filing jointly is 10000 but married filing separately is 5000 The first time we've come across a true penalty for married filing uh, separately, okay, uh, you might say. So a little bit more about the taxes that are deductible. And it, it can be taxes on, your real estate tax is going to be on as many properties as you own, okay? So it's not limited, and we'll see that there's limits on other, a number of properties. I can own property in multiple states. I can own property uh, all over the place and pay taxes. All of those can be added. Of course, most people just have their own, their home, and that property tax is added in there, but it could be others, okay? Um, and then the other th one part I already mentioned on personal use assets, like your car, uh, levied on personal property, must be based on the value, like we mentioned. Where do you get your income tax? You pay, okay, whether you're withholding or you pay estimated taxes or you pay it with your tax return. You know, you didn't have enough withheld, and so you pay it in. Uh, Pennsylvania is a very simple uh, state tax. It's all, everybody pays the same rate, and so it's really pretty easy uh, to get the withholding right, so you often don't, don't have much either way. But if you have other income in other states or things like that, that could be different. And remember that if you get a refund of taxes that you paid in, which means you basically paid too much, right? If you got a deduction for it, meaning it was enough to put you over the standard deduction, then when you get a refund, okay, that is income. It's reported as income. If What you want to do is if uh, someone has 
itemized their deductions in the past and used state income taxes, one of those itemized deductions, you probably can assume that in the current year or in the last year that they probably or they're probably going to be able to do that. And you're going to investigate what that amount is so that you know how much of their refund is taxable. Uh, of course, refer to the tax uh, benefit rule. Now, for some states, not Pennsylvania, but other states, they don't have a state or local income tax. So those folks can use their state and local sales tax if it's higher. Or maybe if their income tax is very low, maybe their local sales tax is higher. Okay? You can't do both. It's one or the other. You want to pick the best, right? The highest one. Okay? Typically, income tax with income tax uh, states and the sales tax with the sales tax states. But if you want to compare it, okay, the amount of sales tax deduction can be determined by taking ac actual sales tax paid during the year. Sounds like almost impossible. You'd have to keep all your receipts for everything you bought that had sales tax on it. Okay. Another way to do this is, is to use the sale is to look for tables. The IRS actually give estimate tables based on your income, state you live in, all that kind of thing that says, okay, this is what we think you probably would pay in the income tax over the I mean sales tax over the course of the year. You can use this estimate. Okay. You can do that. And if you had big items, okay, so in a year that you say buy a car or uh, RV or something like that where you pay a whole bunch of sales tax on that purchase, you could keep the receipt just for that and add that receipt to the amount that you get from the estimated uh, tables. And that, even in a state like Pennsylvania with an income tax, that might, in that particular year, sales tax may be higher than your, in your income tax. You can choose whichever one you, is higher for that year. You don't have to stick with it year after year, okay? Foreign taxes are deductible, but you usually are going to be better off taking a credit for a foreign taxes pay, which is going to reduce your actual uh, federal income tax, not just your taxable income. Okay, uh, so typically that's going to be a, save you much more money than doing it using the uh, a deduction method. Okay. All right, then interest, okay? The third itemized deduction, moving down the Schedule A, interest paid on a home acquisition loan or home equity loan secured by a qualified residence is deductible. But there are limits, okay? This is interest paid, um, and, and you, get, you get a loan on it, you get a home equity loan. But for the amount that you borrow. Now, this isn't the amount of interest. This is the amount you borrow to get your acquire your house. Can't be more than 750000 meaning if you got a million dollar house and borrowed a million dollars, then part of the interest is deductible up to seven fifty, but the part that's on the two fifty above that is not. Okay? Uh, it has to be to buy or improve. Okay? Uh, your your home. It can't be to take a vacation. It can't be to buy stocks. It can't be other things. Okay, like that. It has to be for your home to be deductible. Otherwise, it is not part of this interest that is deductible. Um, they did. IRS has been lost. You might say uh, the the courts have said that. The 750000 limit is on a per taxpayer basis. So an unmarried couple that owns property together with subject to a mortgage interest of 750000 per individual. So they actually could get a million and a half for not being married, okay, and owning it on a co-resident basis uh, where if they were married, okay, because married filing jointly is treated as a single 
individual, say, uh, uh, one individual person, okay, then it would only be 750000 So it's an, uh, uh, kind of a marriage penalty. There's a few of those in the tax law where you're actually penalized for being married. Okay, this applies to the home equity. So you have to add your regular loan and your home equity loan together to see if you're over the 750, 150,000 um, limit. Um, points. What is what are points? Typically, uh, it's prepaid interest. It's amounts that you pay when you take out your loan to buy to to buy your house. All right. The the Typical idea is with points, you're paying interest, interest up front, but it really doesn't deductible until you've used it over time. So you, you deduct it over the term of the loan. Okay, When it is your principal residence, your points paid, and then that is the, the normal way that things happen, and it is in most, most places in the United States. Buying points is a common practice, meaning you pay extra up front and you get a lower interest rate. So you're really paying the interest all at once up front. That is a very typical thing. And if that's the case, then you can deduct it all up front, only if it's a principal residence. Okay, Rental house, no. Okay, Business property, no. Okay. But if it is your principal residence, then you can deduct it all at once. That can be a huge benefit in the year that you take out the loan if that uh, you buy points. And that will be reported to you on the 1098 interest uh, that they, the bank says you says this is how much you paid in points, this is how much you paid in interest. Okay. And then our last thing on interest used to be deductible. Okay. The insurance required by lenders when you borrow to more than 80% of the value of your house is called private mortgage insurance. Used to be deductible as interest under the interest category. Okay, it was a separate uh, category under interest. It expired. Okay, they let that. A lot of the things in the tax law have are temporary. And if, if they don't redo the law, then they just expire. They go away. And that's what happened with this. It went away in 20, at the end of 2021, and it's not deductible for 2022, okay? So we can, and this wasn't homeowner's insurance. This was private mortgage insurance, insurance that pays out if you can't pay your interest, okay? Uh, oh, I thought we were done with interest. One more, investment interest. Forgot about investment interest. Separate from your mortgage interest. This is when you buy, you, you borrow money to say buy investments like stocks or bonds. You can usually, when you're a broker, you can borrow money from them to buy um, investments. Okay. Um, that investment interest is that you pay because you borrow it and you pay interest on it is deductible to the amount of the net investment income for the year and when we say net investment income that means that the whatever you bought or some other investments have to make you interest at that your and you have to subtract other expenses uh, that you might have uh, commissions uh, you know uh, other fees that you pay to the broker have to come out first. Then, if you still have investment income, then you can deduct your investment interest. If you have more investment interest than you have investment income, then the rest is non-deductible in the current year and is carried forward to future years to see if that, that investment income is available in the future years. Okay. Follow up to this concept. If you borrow money from your broker to buy tax exempt bonds, bonds that pay tax exempt interest, which we learned about um, in chapter three uh, about th that, that type of interest. If that's the case, when you pay interest to your broker, to borrow for the money you use to, to buy these non-taxable uh, uh, investments, the interest you pay on that borrowing is not deductible.
See, you didn't have to report the income, so you don't have to, you don't get to report the expense. Okay, you have to have income. So that's the situation with uh, investment interest. You have to be making money. Uh, if, if you borrow money to buy a piece of land because you think it's going to go up in value, not because it, it's just sitting there, it's not making you any money. The interest you pay on that loan to buy that land is not going to be deductible. It's investment interest expense, and you're not generating any income unless you happen to have other investments that have income. Okay, you can use that, but that particular investment is not making you any money. Bringing anything in right now, maybe it will in the future, but it's not right now, and therefore your interest is not deductible. Not included in the total interest. Okay. Um, I think I want to remind you of something over here under interest for your home. That is limited to two properties. Okay. You can have interest on your home, your principal residence, and one other residence. So you can have a vacation home. Okay. That cabin then use the interest on that as well as your main home the third home no it better be some you have to have find some other way reason to deduct it it will not qualify under the mortgage interest deduction